What up, everybody? It's Chris Roscoe. This is Operation Moksha, and today we're talking about sex. And specifically, we're talking about the role that sexual energy and sexuality has outside of the bedroom. Because it's a pretty big fucking role, considering that sex uh, is going to be one of the biggest influences that you pretty much ever have throughout the course of your life. You've got the will to survive and the will to procreate. And basically, the will to survive exists so that you can procreate. And so really, on a very fundamental level, that's really all life is, is a series of trying to survive and live in a way that will come as close to ensuring your ability to procreate as much as humanly possible. Let's think about it. Our entire identity, until we, you know, decide to consciously rewrite it, our entire identity is built around what we think we want people to see us as so that they will like us, so that we will be accepted into a group and hopefully find a mate. That's essentially what the personality is on a very fundamental level. So the role that sex plays outside of your bedroom cannot be overstated. It just can't. It's the most powerful drive in your psyche. So first of all, uh, let's just be very, very clear of the, the power that you're fucking working with. And on a practical level, you can either have that power integrated into your values and into your desires and into your dreams and into your goals. And you can infuse your whole being with that energy and use all of that shit at your disposal to be able to go in the direction that you want to go. Just firing, just going for it. Or you can put a cap on it and repress all that shit and have it come out in a whole bunch of weird kooky ways that fucks your life up and everyone around you. So not only is it like a, a practical thing of like you just want to be able to use that energy in your life for different areas, but there's an ethical dilemma in it in that if you don't wield that power responsibly, it can lead to a lot of super weird shit. Like if you're on the more aggressive masculine scale, I think we can all identify pretty clearly where that goes wrong. Being overly aggressive, overly dominant. Not too hard to figure out where that goes wrong. Now, if you're on the more submissive side, then you end up being passive aggressive and pulling all these weird little creepy shadow strings from behind the, <laughs> the scenes and it's gross. And both can fuck people up tremendous, tremendous amounts, both as the person doing it and as the person who has to be around someone doing that. So it's, it's weird how they can both just really fuck your life up. If, depending on whatever way you lean, if you wield it irresponsibly, you're asking for trouble. So practical elements, ethical elements. And then I want to actually take some time to take a look at what someone who's learned how to integrate these things into their life actually looks like. And what that makes possible for you, right? So let's take a look at how I currently understand the ultimate sexual ideal. Uh, as far as I can tell, the ultimate sexual ideal is, first of all, being able to clearly identify what you want. Then being able to articulate it in a way to where if the right person hears it, their ears perk up and they go, whoa, yeah, I want that. Let's do that. And if the wrong person hears it, then it's like really not that big of a deal. And you're actually able to take that rejection, so to speak, and be okay with it and still try to find the right person. And then if you do find the right person and communicate your desires eloquently enough to where it turns them on and makes them want to do that with you, then you actually have to do it in a way where everyone's satisfied and they're like, yeah, let's do that again, right? That's essentially the, the ideal is here's what I want. I found someone that I want to do it with who's excited about doing it with me. And we do it in such a way where it's so good that we want to keep doing it. That's a pretty sterile way of looking at it, but it's going to fit the purposes for the metaphors that I'm trying to use here because that process is essentially all life is. All life is is a series of identifying your desires, articulating them well enough so that the right people will perk their ears up and be like, whoa, I want to get in on that, and then actually playing the game well enough so that everyone else wants to keep playing. Like if you're like me and you want to start a business, uh, I'm going to need 
clients, first of all. So if, <laughs> if I have ideas and desires and I can't articulate them in a way that's going to make people be like, well, bro, yeah, I want to get in on that. If I can't do that, I'm pretty much fucking dead in the water. And I'm eventually going to have to have employees. And if I can't communicate my desires clearly to my employees in a way that makes them actually want to do them, I'm fucked. And there's not much, unless you want to go live out in the woods somewhere, out on your own, like, even then you got to get your food from somewhere. Like, you're going to have to be able to deal with people on, on some level, unless you're just a fucking hermit. But if you're watching this, you're on the internet and you're listening to a thing about sex. So it's probably not what you want to do. So on some level, you're going to have to integrate your desires with the world around you in just about every instance of your life. And if you can do that with your sexuality, which is the deepest and also some of the most vulnerable sets of desires and fears and boundaries and judgments and insecurities and all shit, if you can master the deepest, darkest, scariest, reptilian shit and actually integrate that into your values so that you can get what you want while being sensitive to the world around you, if you can do that with sex, you can do that with pretty much fucking anything. So it stands to reason that it's actually a super good um, place to start. I'm not necessarily a place to start. Like you don't you don't want to be like I'm not going to do anything until I master my sexuality. That's not really a good way to live. But it's it just can't be understated enough. Like if you can straighten yourself out in relationship to your sexuality, then th the whole fucking world opens up to you. And because like how many times have we fallen into these traps, right? It's like, maybe you know clearly what you want, but you don't articulate it, and so you don't actually end up getting it, and then you're sad and miserable. Or you can articulate it, but you're afraid to articulate it to the people that actually turn you on, or the people that you actually want to get in a relationship with, and so you settle for someone lower, and then you end up hating that, and that sucks. Or you articulate it to the right person in a way that gets you to enroll them and all that, but maybe you're like a pickup artist, and your whole game was fake, and then when you actually have the sex, it's unsatisfying for both of you. And then neither one of you want to keep it up. You, but you act like you're the cool guy or whatever. Like that, <laughs> all of, if you don't, if either one of these elements is, a, is out of alignment, you're not going to have the right experience. And each one requires a different thing of you. You know, identifying your desires, that's very difficult for a lot of people. A lot of people don't know what the fuck they want. And then being able to clearly articulate it, that means that someone could not want it. And for, for you to take your most authentic and, and deep sexual desires and say those to another person and have them be like, mm, nah, like that can fucking hurt. That can hurt a lot. It's, it's a denial of one of the deepest parts of ourselves. It's the drive to procreate and the drive to have our genes and our, and our, our lineage keep going is no small thing. It's no small thing whatsoever. And so to have that denied can be devastating for a lot of people but if you can find a way to be okay with that so okay with it that if they say no you're fine with it but you still put enough into it to really excite the people that want to do that with you that alone is a huge exercise in vulnerability and, and humility and the ability to take rejection and, and let people be who they are while still being yourself like so that's fucking big and then actually integrating that whole experience into your body well enough so that the way you fuck is is exciting to you and satisfying to you in a way where you're still connected to the other person and satisfying them and, and specifically the ways they want to be satisfied like if you can really get that line between self and other to to diminish to the point where that happens then not only are you having the kind of sex that i think deep down we all crave which is where you don't really know where you start and the other person or where you end and the other person begins. Like, sure, kinky sex is cool. I, I love kinky sex. That's good too. But on some deep primordial level, I think we're all craving that union. Specifically because we all came into this world in an environment where <laughs> the line between self and other was damn near non-existent. Like, there's you're in your mom, in her stomach, and then there's a cord connecting you two. And so there really is no line between self and other. You're essentially the same thing. That's how, that's how we were born. That's how we came into this world. And on some level, we crave that, especially if you want to get spiritual with it. When you think, when you start to notice that we're all connected through our emotions and through all kinds of different ways. And 
what ends up happening when you integrate more of yourself is that line between self and other starts to get smaller and smaller. And so you integrate that with your career. You find the thing that you love and the thing that makes you happy and you integrate it into the world of others so you can find a way to make money off of it or at least like make the world a little bit better with it or something like that. You integrate your desires with the world around you. And that's essentially all sex is. Is you're integrating your desires into the desires of another person. And that's all business is. That's... That's being an artist that's pretty much damn near anything worth doing is going to be about integrating the line between self and other. And so, like I said, if you can do that with sex, you can do it with pretty much anything. And if especially that whole process I outlined, because that's that's kind of full bodied character. If you can embody character on that level, then there ain't going to be a whole lot of shit you can't do. So, um Sex is really fucking important to get right, if nothing else for the fact that it'll fuck you up if you don't get it right. And by get it right, I mean do it your way, the way that makes you genuinely happy. Like, are you telling the truth about your desires? Are you able to hear the truth about other people's desires? Are you able to hear the truth about other people's boundaries? Are you able to communicate your boundaries? Get all that shit right, and I can damn near guarantee you everything else will start making a whole hell of a lot more sense. So I want to thank you for being here. If you made it 11 and a half minutes into this, then I love you. I appreciate you more than I could ever communicate. Because it's cool that you would sit here and listen to 12 minutes of me talking about sex. That's dope. So if you have any questions about this, if there's anything that I left out or any topics you think I could go deeper into, let me know. Because this particular topic was given as a suggestion from my uh, Instagram page. And I'm really impressed with the, sh the questions that you guys come up with uh, because they're really, really cool. And a lot of them are things I wouldn't necessarily think to talk about. Like this, for instance, the role that sex plays outside of uh, the bedroom. It's not a topic I would normally think to talk about, but God damn, it is important. And I think about it all the time, but it's one of those things that's so, it's like, it's so embedded in my thought process that I don't even necessarily realize that it's there. Um, but to me, sex is connected to everything. And, and it doesn't, and when I say that, it doesn't necessarily mean that like, you're going to want one around running, wanting to fuck everybody. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. Cause sex also having a healthy relationship with your sexuality means you have sexual or you have healthy relationships with where sex doesn't belong and you're okay with that. And so there's a whole element of it. It's not just like fucking sexual energy everywhere it's like okay this is you're able to differentiate where to use and when not to and god damn if that ain't fucking worthwhile okay all right i'm gonna go i love you thanks for being here